right? Okay, cool. All right, guys. I think you remember what I told you yesterday that I need to record a lesson and submit it to finish up my kit. Hold up. To finish up my K tip, so that's what this is about. It's gonna follow me around the room. I'm wearing a microphone, I'm wearing a little sensor. Uh, so, whatever I say, it's gonna pick up. It will also be able to hear you as well. Um, it can hear us from even over there. <laughs> It'll also pick up your voices as well. All right, so. What I need you to do right now, if you have a calculator on your desk, what you need to do is get out a piece of paper and a pencil. You will need that today, and you'll definitely need that to start on your warm-up, which relates to finding area. Okay? Yes, please, sir. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to set a timer for this. You have four minutes to complete these three questions. Uh, focus, you should be able to do it within those four minutes. Timer's right here. Please don't yell out. If you have a question, raise your hand. question, Lakeith. Diameter is all the way across the circle, from side to side. So all you have to do, Lance, is take the radius that they give you and plug it in for the radius down here to the R. Okay. And here's a visual if you're not sure. Here's a circle. Nope, that's an old one. Let's try again. How about a circle this time? Here's a circle. The radius is going to go from the center to where? Raise your hand. Travis? To the outside edge. Okay? This is what we call the radius. As opposed to the diameter, which does what? If I draw another circle to represent diameter, Here's the center of the circle. The diameter doesn't just go from the center to the outside edge. De Asia, it does what? Oh, from the center to both sides. From the center all the way across, okay? Yes, ma'am. Base. So this is your base. 
why it's so hot. You're going to take these two numbers and substitute them in the equation. Mm -hmm. All right, hang on just a second. If you're a little confused, don't worry. We're going to go over this right now. Then we're going to dive into the lesson, okay? Who would like to tell us how they did number one? And speak loud so that we can pick up your voice on the camera. All right? Uh, Chrysler, have you volunteered today yet? I haven't volunteered today yet. Yeah, for this class? No. Okay. Chrysler, number one, how did you solve it? I did one half times six times 20. Okay. Area equals one half times six times ten. Which gives me thirty. Thirty. All right. Now, I've got a new question, and this wasn't part of uh, the questions on your warm up. Are we talking about inches, centimeters, feet, miles, or units? What's the measurement here, Jeremy? Yeah, it doesn't say, so we're going to call it units and. Is it units? Is it units squared? Is it units cubed? How do we how do we denote area? Squared or cubed? What do you think, Adrian? You think it's cubed? Okay. Why do you believe that? Because well, it could be it could be squared. Okay. Because we use a lot of squares in the theorem theorem. Okay. Let's back up just a second, though, because he said I think it's cubed. Here's what a cube looks like. Are we finding the space inside of shapes right now? Or are we finding the space on one area of a circle? <clears throat> so, are we finding just this space on this circle here of the cylinder? Or are we trying to find the whole inside of the cylinder right now? We're, you agree? Just this? Alright, so we're talking about a two-dimensional figure, not a three-dimensional figure. Okay? Now that I told you that, do you think it's squared or cubed? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Deasia, I caught on you already, right? No? Okay, go ahead, Deasia. Oh, we're still on the cube. Well, maybe we can figure out the difference today. Maybe that'll be part of our lesson today. I'll go ahead and tell you that it's squared, all right? When we're finding area, we're finding the <laughs> space inside of a two-dimensional figure. Oh, so and we'll relate that back to a two-dimensional figure here in just a few minutes, okay? Yes, ma'am. So if it's two-dimensional, then the uh, square is three-dimensional, then the cube. You're right. Absolutely. Who would like to volunteer answer for the area of circle number two? What's your question? Well, the answer for number two is uh, as a three hundred fourteen point fifteen. Okay. Well, let's figure out how you came up with that answer. Who else has an answer for number two? I'm getting the oh, Kayla. What do you got? All right, how did you get that? I did uh, 3.14 times uh, 3 radius, which was 10. Uh-huh. And then I squared the 10. All right. She says the answer is 314. And are we talking about inches, centimeters, feet, miles, meters, kilometers? Units. Or units? Units. Units, because it doesn't say. So we'll refer to it as units. And is it unit squared or cubed? Cube. Square. 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 Okay. All right. Area refers to a two-dimensional figure. Think about this square. See this square on top here? Yeah. If you want to get the area of a square, how many numbers do you multiply together? Two. Two. Are they the same number or different number? Different. If it's a square. Same. They're the same number. So let's say this is three inches going across here. Well, then that means if this, this is three inches, right? Yes. So to get the area of this, you'd have to do three times 
3, right? Yeah. Which is the same thing as 3 squared to get area. You Squared, area of a square, 3 squared, okay? That's where this stuff's coming from. Now, if you want to get the volume of a cube, you do a number here. Let's say that that number is now 4. And a number here. Let's say that number is also 4. So 4 times 4, but that gives us area because it's 4 squared. So we need to have another one, the height of a cube. 4 times 4 times 4, which is 4 to the third power, which makes it... What shape is this? Cube. 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 Okay? That's kind of where those two things derive from. from okay? And again, in our lesson today, this will start making more sense as we go through and, and do our work. The last one. Volunteer. Stephanie, Connor, Yasmin. Haley, Lakeith, Marcus, Robin. Haley? I didn't solve yet, but I'm going to All right. Pi. Area equals? Um, pi. Good. Um, what about radius and pi? Yes, the radius will be 5 this time. Square. Because they gave yeah. you Square. diameter. And we need to do one more thing to this. Squared. Squared. And if we plug this in our calculator, our area is what? Look, Keith. Ooh. 78. 78.5. Now, again, units, centimeters, feet, miles, inches. Units squared. Units squared. Units squared. Okay. Any questions about that? No. All right, I've got an activity for you guys in a little bit to help you with that if you're struggling with the area of a shape. Who's on here? All right, sorry. All right, I'll read you the learning target in just a second when you're done writing. Okay, Rice? All right, okay. How about now? How about now? Yes. All right, all right. Okay, so today's learning target. There's two of them. They kind of get harder as they go. The first one is I can find the volume of a cone, cylinder, and sphere. Notice I did not say sphere. I said sphere. There's a difference, okay? A sphere is something that you might throw with a sharp point on the end. But a sphere... Sphere is what looks like a basketball, okay? It's like a circular shape. Like that? So it's a basketball. Yeah, like this one down here. Like this. Alright? Here it is. A sphere. We refer to them as baseballs, soccer balls, golf balls, basketballs. Spheres. Not a football. That's right. Not a football. Alright? So your second learning target is related, but a little bit more involved. When given the volume of a figure, I can solve for the unknown measurement. So the second learning target starts with the end result, the volume, and you have to work backwards to get the answer of either radius or height or diameter, depending on what the question asks for. Okay? Now, what I have here is some papers that we are going to work through today. When you get your paper, what's the first thing you should do? Put your name on it. Make sure that your name is on it. So that nobody can take your work and say, yeah, Mr. Cranham did my work. There you go. All right. After your name's on it, I need a volunteer to read the directions. But after your name's on it, oh, and don't get rid of your papers because you'll need your papers as well, okay? Uh, the, the warm up paper, don't get rid of that. I need a new volunteer to read. Have a call on me. Mm -hmm. All right, Lance, read from the top, okay? Use this reference sheet to help you answer the following questions about the volumes of cones, cylinders, and spheres in the area of a circle. You may begin where you are most comfortable, but keep in mind you are expected to be able to complete the yellow paper. Okay. Thank you. 
Now, let's read that last sentence one more time. Marcus will read it out loud for us. You may begin where you are most comfortable, but keep in mind that you are expected to be able to complete the yellow paper. Okay. So, does Mr. Carney expect you to do this entire packet? No. No, I don't. What I've done is I've created some work to help you find a, a point where you're most comfortable, where you can figure out how you can start solving these problems. So, for example, let's look at that yellow paper real fast, okay? Real fast. This is the ultimate goal. The very back of the yellow paper, we've got word problems. And no figures drawn for us, okay? What they say is things like, if the volume of a cone is blah, 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 can you solve for the radius? Okay? That's the ultimate goal. That's your second learning target. Now let's flip to the green paper. The green paper. The directions on the green paper find the volume of each figure using the formula. I've got some multiple choice questions, so you can check answers. So if your number is way out in left field, maybe you did it wrong. Then I've got some questions where it's open response, so there's no multiple choice. They get, they get a little bit difficult, more difficult as you go. Now let's look at the pink paper. The very front of the pink paper. This is what I would refer to as the easiest paper. Okay? So if you can't do the yellow and you can't do the green, that's okay. We'll get you there. But you can start with the pink paper and find things like the diameter if you're given the radius, or find the radius if you're given the diameter. That's like number one through eight. And then you can use on the back page, of the back of the pink page, you've got the area of a circle. Okay. So if you really struggled with the warm-up, maybe you should start on the pink page. If you dominated the warm-up and it was a piece of cake for you and you can do it in your sleep, maybe you should start with the green page. Yeah. And if the green page is just way too easy for you, maybe you should start at the yellow page. We did this in second period, and it, I was really surprised to see who chose what. Some people that can do all the pages, no matter what, preferred to start at the pink page just to get a feel for what was happening on that page. Okay. Now let's talk about your reference sheet, this page. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, and on the uh, ink page, and it, uh, uh, the, don't you do the formula we just use on the warm-up? Yeah, well, I'll actually put some formulas up here and, so we can keep that in mind. Okay. Now, on the reference page, the reference page, we have three examples. We have an example of a cylinder, an example for finding the volume of a cone, and an example of finding the volume of a sphere. And then the very last thing I have on the back of this is an example using the area of a circle. All right? What I'm going to do is run through this with you to get you familiar with the reference sheet. Then I'm going to let you work on your paper. And I'm going to try to do this fast because I have a lot of stuff I want you to do today. Not a lot of busy work, but I have an exit slip I want you to do with clickers today. And I'd really like to get to that. I think you might enjoy it. At least I think it's pretty cool. Is it about our opinion? Uh, no, it's about this thing. So, Without further ado, number one, volume of a circular cylinder on the reference sheet. Who would like to read what it says since the, that's where we're going to start, since the, what? Uh, Danny Roberto? What do you think? No, yes, no. All right, Marcus, go. Wait, have you read? All right, go for it, Marcus. Since the base of a circular cylinder is a circle, and its area is equal to pi radius to the second power. Okay. We can substitute pi radius to the second for we need to find the volume of a cylinder. Okay. So if we take that information and we apply it to the next sentence where it says in words, it says if a circular cylinder has a base, with a radius of r units and a height of h units in the volume, v is pi r squared h cubic units. But that's a little con confusing. So what I like to do is take those word sentences and transform them into an equation. Volume equals pi 
times r squared times h. And take a look at this picture. This is the reference sheet. We're at the very beginning. This is example two. Example two. So the whole goal here is to identify the radius and the height and substitute those two numbers into the equation to find the volume. But what's the problem with this first one? They, do they give us the height? No. Uh, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they give us the radius? No, they give us the diameter. They gave us the diameter. So we have to do a little bit of mental math to change this number to 7 because we need the radius. Now, how do you get from 14 to 7? Did you subtract 7? No. It's half. It's half. To go from diameter to radius. You must, you, I'll just put divide by 2. Well, what if I want to go from radius to diameter? What do I do? If I want to go from radius to diameter, Adrian, do you know what I do? What's the inverse operation in division? Multiplication. So, Adrian, if to go from diameter to radius... You divide by 2. Well, if you want to go the other way, what do you think you have to do? Multiply, because multiply will undo division, right? That's our inverse operation. Any questions about that? Okay. To a cone. Next example. Let's see. They use the measurement. They go this, and they say this is 20, and they say this is 6. And the volume of a cone is volume equals one-third pi times r squared times height, okay? Again, what's the problem with this cone that I drew on the board that you have to be aware of before you start substituting numbers in this equation? Stephanie, what's the problem with this cone? Can I just take the 20 and the 6 and substitute them in the equation? No. Why not? Do you need a lifeline? Do you know what I'm fishing for? Oh. Not bluegill. Bad. I want to talk about this number right here. You see this 20 right here? What does that 20 represent? You, you've got a 50 foot shot. I saw it on the tip of your tongue. You were about to say radius, weren't you? Correct. So does it represent radius or diameter? That's the question, right? It goes all the way across. It goes all the way across. This 20 represents the diameter, but our formula calls for... Radius. Radius. Be careful, okay? And the last one, a sphere. It's like a circle if you're drawing it on paper with an oval, okay? This one is the most interesting formula in my opinion. Volume equals four thirds pi times radius cubed. What's different this time? There's two things that are different. And are you awake? Okay, good. Uh, gentlemen here, what do you notice that's different this time? With this equation compared to this equation or this equation? What are, we, what are we doing different that we need to be aware of? Or what are we doing that's the same? I'll take either one. Take a guess. You're not going to hurt my feelings or anyone else's feelings. Take a guess, Danny or Roberto. If you had to guess, good. The fraction's different. So first of all, we've got a different fraction. It's four thirds and not one third. Thank you, sir. What else is different, Danny? It's cubed. Check that out. It's not squared anymore. It's cubed. 
That's different. What's the same? Connor. It still uses the radius. Absolutely. And what else is the same? One other similarity that's the same across the board. We use this every time. Do you know? Oh my goodness. Like, I like that you did that. She looked behind her like. What do you think, guys? Ah. Ah. This is the same, right? Okay, does everybody know how to find pi on the calculator? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Second, Second, F to D. F to D. That's fraction of decimal. Or you could do 3.14. Or you could do 3.14, but I'll tell you that if you use 3.14, your answers will be wrong. Not as close as if you use pi. Okay? Alright. Now, there's one last thing, and then I'll be quiet so you guys can get some work in, okay? On your warm-up paper, Travis. You okay? Still with me? On your warm-up paper, I have some guiding questions that we may have talked about before during our previous lessons that I want you to consider, okay? And let me erase some of this stuff for you. Do you want to write this down? I do not want you to write these questions down, but I would like for you to have them in the back of your mind because we will be talking about this at the end of class when we wrap things up, okay? Question number one. And we're not going to answer these right now. I'm just going to read them so you're familiar. What is the difference between area and volume? Question two. What is the relationship? What relationship does area and volume have? Question three. What is it that volume tells us, and how does that answer relate back to area? Those are some things that you need to think about while you're working on your paper, okay? Now, do you have to do the whole packet for no. credit? No. No. Do you have to start on a certain color? No. no. Can you start where you're most comfortable? Yes. Yeah. Can you ask me questions if you need help? Yes. Yeah. Who said no? Yeah. Thank you, Lance. Uh, yes, you can ask me questions if you need help. You can ask people. Are you still being recorded? Yes. Yeah. No. Is your assistant principal going to watch? No. Yes. Actually, yes, he is. I'm yeah. sure. I'm No, it's not live feed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to submit it to him. So, what I want you to do, find a place where you can be successful and start working on your paper. I'm going to set a timer for this, and when that timer goes off, we're going to transition into something else. So make sure you're working hard because you're going to have an exit slip that's going to ask you to produce some answers here in just a few minutes, all right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Let's see. We are... We've got about 27 minutes left of class. This is so easy. I'm going to check in with you in 15 minutes. We're going to come back as a class together. Your timer is right here. All right. Do we have to show our work on the pink page if we know it already? If you know it already, you don't need to show work, okay? All right, because that's what we are going to call our easier page. Questions, gentlemen? Well, you know, that's something that we can figure out during this process. Do you have a question about that? Okay, we'll take a look at this. What are they asking you to find for number nine? Are they asking area or volume? <laughs> okay. Take a look at that shape. What kind of shape is that? All right. Two dimension or 3D? 2D. Okay. Compare that shape with some of the other shapes on the green page. I'll come back to you, okay? In case you need them, we've got some formulas up here. Volume equals. One third pi times r squared. Mm -hmm. Volume mm -hmm. equals times height. So pi times r squared times height. And volume equals one third pi times the radius cube.
Yes, sir. <coughs> well, do you need to show work on this page, or is this page too easy for you? Mm -hmm. Easy, yeah, you should show work on this. Okay. Yes, you should show your work on this. Well, do you remember the answer, or do you remember how to give the answer? I remember the letter. You remember the letter, okay. Yes, sir. But, what happens when those are switched around and the numbers are changed because this is a different question? Uh, <laughs> right? Right, so let's let's learn how to use the formula to get the answer we need. Yes, sir. Well, let's see which one you're talking about. And your question was, don't you divide this one? Uh, well, I think there is going to be some kind of division. But I just to see the formula, what you're doing and what you're dividing by. So can you write it out on paper? All right. If you get a clicker on your desk, just leave it off to the side. You're not going to need it yet. Yes? That's right. That is a cylinder. Yeah? Okay. Chrysler, would you take these and pass them around? Alright, well, give me a second. I'll, I'll show you something. Can you convert these? 
I will. All right. So, simple. Do you, can you identify where the radius would come from and where the height would come from? Okay, so the height would be here, you're right. And the radius would come from here to here or from here to here, right? But if I turn it on the side, would anything change? Okay, tell me what you think now. Where would the radius and height come from? Is this a circle? Oh. Is this like a straight bar? You need to still kind of curve, right? Actually, no matter where you turn it, how you turn it, the height is always from top to bottom. And the radius is always going to be on the circle to the outside edge. And that's because this is made up of this, these two shapes. So the radius is always going to be located on the circles, no matter how we turn this shape. So whether it's turned this way, this way. Okay, does that make sense? So, if the radius is always on the circle and this figure is turned on its side, would the 9 be, wouldn't the 9 be here and the 22 be there? Okay. What's the problem with that 22? Yeah. That's right. You're absolutely right. Now, I bet if you write the formula down on paper, then it's going to help you get the numbers in the right spot. Are you okay? Pencil? I need to do pencils. Okay. I gave them two. How many people don't have a clicker? Everybody has a clicker. Do you have a clicker? Mm -hmm. Who doesn't have a clicker? Okay. Christopher, do you need a new pencil? Mm -hmm. Please. Danny, do you need any help? You got about six minutes to just work through this, see what you can gather from this, and figure out. Okay. What do you need help with? This one? All right, what are the directions? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they want us to find the area of that circle. What's the formula for the area of the circle? That's right. Pi times radius to the second time. So let's write that down here. Area equals pi times radius squared. So put A <laughs> How about we fill it in? Mm -hmm. Pi is pi, right? Pi is just a number, and that's how we represent that number. So what's the radius of this circle? Mm -hmm. That's right. So we need to take this a and the second two here, right? Yeah, give it a try. We'll come back. Jeremy, what's up? Okay. What's your question? Okay. Well, what have they given us? What is that? They gave us the height. What else did they give us? What? Nothing. All right, let's reread that problem real quick. Oh. Hey guys, don't forget about those questions on the board. I really want you to be thinking about that and jot down a couple notes on your warm-up paper when something comes to mind. Sharonda, I don't have any tissue. Maybe you can go to the bathroom real fast. What'd you find out? Okay, so you just told me in number one they give you the volume and they give you the height. What are they missing that they ask you to figure out? What's that? Yeah, we're missing radius, right? Okay. Now, I don't want to show you how to do it. I want to see if you can work your way up to figuring it out, okay? I know that might frustrate, be frustrating, but I think you can do it. And if you can't, 
That's okay. Think about how you find the volume of these two shapes. I'll be right with you. Yes, sir. Um, well, tell me what you did for one through four. So two five two is four. Is that what you saying? Okay, so you multiply by two. You, you took the radius and multiply by two. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I didn't. No, not. Hey, don't don't let me can don't let me trick you up here. What do they give you? And you're looking for. So how did you go from radius to diameter? No, he did it right. I'm just asking you to clarify. How did you go from having the value of the radius to getting the value of the diameter? The radius is the small one, the diameter is the large one. What's the relationship? What's the relationship? Here you go. What's the inverse of this? I'm very interested to know how you came up with all these answers. Correct answers, I'm on that. How did you come up with all these correct answers? What I did was I added by itself, so I got by So I need 2 plus 3. Ah! 3 or 4. So, if you do 2 plus 2, what would you do here? I did 4 plus 4, and then I did 8. And then the point is, you add it Ah, okay. So instead of multiplying by two, you just added the radius to itself to get the diameter. Yeah. Okay. Because it's doubling, right? It does the same thing. What did you do? Sorry, Travis. I'll answer your question in just a second, okay? So, we're not going to leave yet. We have several minutes of class left. I want to remind you that I had some questions that I want you to think about. We're going to answer the first question. Then we're going to reflect on the other two questions, I think, tomorrow so we can do our exit slip. Number one, what is the difference between area and volume? What do you think, Jeremy? Jeremy? The area is how many in the whole shape? Okay. Anybody else? What's the difference between area and volume? Are you telling me that we need to save this question for tomorrow? No, what was the question? What's the difference between area and volume? Okay, Crystal just got an opinion. The area is like how big is it? How big what is? The shape. Like the cone, the cylinder, the mm. sphere. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yes, sir? It's like, isn't that? Is the area like 
after you like finish the whole problem, like that's what it all equals, and the volume is just like what it equals in the beginning before you solve it, like the numbers you have. Interesting. Okay. Anybody else? The Asia. Everyone is like, like what one is saying. So everyone like, if you was to add this area of this paper. Okay. Base and height. Okay. I'm going to build up on this because I really like the way that you referenced this and it made me think of something that I haven't thought of before. Let's think about the area versus the what. I'm going to come around and collect your package. You can put your pencils down for now, okay? And I'm going to say this real fast and then we're going to move on. First of all, don't write on this, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't write on this. She said, area is like finding out how much space is on this piece of paper. Multiplying the length times the width. Now, what's this package made up of? Paper. 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 But now I can find the volume of this, right? Yeah. Because this is kind of similar. I mean, this is a three-dimensional shape. But if I put it up here, it looks more like a two-dimensional shape. Yeah. yeah. But if I put this up here, it's still a three-dimensional shape, right? Yeah. I know, it's loud. So, can you calculate the volume of this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what is volume if you calculate this? How much Jeremy? The inside. It's all that space on the inside, right? As opposed to the area, which is just all this space on the flat outside. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going to come around and collect those packets that you were that you were working on. All of you can turn your clickers on real fast. Join my class. It's got my name. You should see it. It says joining fifth period. It should say join my class. You say join period five. Okay, let's see here. I'll, I'll press find in class. What, so find a new class. Try finding a new class. Carney, like eight. It should say Carney 8. Carney. You're right. Do we put I our, am. I'm getting them. Do we put our same clicker ID here? Yes. Please use the same clicker, I, cl clicker ID. Thank you. Please use the same clicker ID. And you may begin... But don't write on my paper, okay? Don't throw paper in my room. I remember my clicker. We can't begin because it's. Well, I can't do the one because it's working to the party. It says in my last time. Alright, guys. So, if you don't know your clicker ID, I have those right here. You gotta start the test. There you go. You gotta start the test. Oh, you're exactly right. I do. Thank you so much. You guys are so smart. Hey, no. Thanks. You guys are so Huh? No, I'm going to do this with all my classes. I have, I, because I, I'm going to start using these all the time. I love them. I no, not the clickers. Oh, <laughs> oh record, no, I recorded second period, too. Uh, they only record two periods? To see which one's better. No, you got to do third period. So you just don't do two No, we don't. Six. Um, All right, I should be ready in ten seconds. Oh, you guys are counting so fast. All right, give me five more seconds. Three, two. Alright, tell me if you can find it now. Nope, can't find it. Yeah, I got it. Alright. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. There's some questions on here. Is that Carney? Carney? Yeah. Carney? Yeah. Carney? Yeah. Carney? Yeah. Carney? Yeah. Unless you have a paper that's messed up, flip it over. Your paper's messed up. Let me get you a new paper. Here we go. Please don't talk. There you go. 
Yeah, you can use calculator. Absolutely. Sometimes it loses track of where it might be. Hello, I'm here. Follow me. Alright. What kind of shape does it look like? Let me hold on just a second. Which one does it look like? One in the middle. One in the middle? What do we call that? Triangle. Do you ever go buy ice cream? Yeah. Do they do you ever get something that comes? Oh, it's a cup. Uh sh Formulas are on the board in case you need them, okay? No, don't write on these. Write on your warm-up paper. Yes. No, please don't write on my papers. If you need to scratch paper, use your warm-up paper that you should still have out.
you're finished, make sure you hit submit. So that I get your scores in. Did you submit that? So they're giving you volume and you have to find what? Well, what do they ask you to find? Item Okay. Yes, sir. I'll take a look at it, okay? Let me take a look at it. Please stay quiet while those are finishing. We've got about eight people that aren't finished yet. Okay? I need you to work quickly and try to finish. Okay. Josh, where are you supposed to line up? Right here. Okay, I can hear you in my room, and that's a problem. I need you to be quiet in the hallway. What's that? Take your paper, turn your clicker off. You can put no. the clicker over here. Can you, we want to see our school. We've got to wait for everybody to be done. Right? All right, I'll just turn it off. Turn it off. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Oh, we'll get the store, scores first thing tomorrow. Okay? No, 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 no. Everybody's done. Oh, how do you know that? I'll turn I'll see turn the computer. I'll turn I wish I could do that. That's you great. Can do it. All right, um, if you're done. I want you to turn off your clicker after you've submitted it. Um, Just let me see our score. Here's your Keith. I need yours. What? And turn your clickers off and put your clickers over here. And have a wonderful day. We're all done. Thank you guys. Okay. And the school year's over.